Welcome back to Development Dynamics, where we are exploring the journeys of individuals who have been making an impact. There's a sector that we like to call the third sector. It's not the private sector, it's not the public sector, um, but it has individuals whose lives are important and whose choices as to how they can make a contribution to society, those stories haven't been told enough. And so we feel the honor and the privilege to provide a, a platform for reflection, for conversation, and for storytelling. And this day we have with us the CEO of Future First Kenya. Her name is Pauline Wanja. Pauline has um, been involved in the education sector in the country and also outside, has worked with various INGOs and local organizations as well, and she's also a recipient of the Nelson Mandela Gracia Michelle <laughs> uh, Innovation Award. We want to hear her story from the beginning, and therefore, thank you very much for joining us on set today. We're excited to have you. You look wonderful. Um, and Karibu Sana. Thank you. Welcome. Have you done this before ever? Uh, not on my life story. Okay. I did try TEDx. You, different. you tried TEDx? No, TED oh. Nairobi actually. Oh, TEDx Nairobi? No, TED Nairobi. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> wow. And how are, are you somewhere? Yeah, on YouTube. Oh, we'll, I'll go check that out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, I definitely have to go and check that out. Karibu uh, to this platform. Uh, feel at home, feel, feel absolutely welcome. We like to begin the journey with um, just finding out who is Pauline and where does Pauline actually hail from? Like if you were to trace your, to trace your background, to trace your roots, uh, where does Pauline Wanja come from? All right, I was born and grew up in Kibera. Yeah. In a place called Silanga. Silanga? Mm -hmm. Kibera has a Silanga. I know Ayani, Fort <laughs> Jesus, uh, Makini. It's a very small part in Kibera, but it's next to Nairobi town. Aha. Uh, easiest oh. route is through Mbagathi, Riara, Tom, Okay, yes. okay. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, that, so that's been home. So you are your girl from Nairobi? Yes, I'm a girl from Nairobi. Grew yeah. up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my family left recently, mm -hmm. but that's always been home. Mm. Yes. But now if you trace, that's where you're born, if you trace back to your, like, what are <laughs> the stories you hear about your forefathers, <laughs> your, your foreparents? Um, <laughs> So interesting story. So mm -hmm. recently I needed my daughter to know a grandfather or two. So I went to a cousin of my dad. Yeah. And it's also just a conversation to know my mm. uh, So from what I'm told, mm -hmm. my grandmother mm. was from a well of family, mm -hmm. like a dynasty kind of, mm. the Elliot Matthew family. Aha. Oh, nice. Mm. <laughs> uh, but my grandfather, not so. So mm. there's a whole story. So I think, I understand my grandfather was from Satellite. We mm -hmm. have a few families mm. there. Mm. Satellite, Riruta. Yeah, Riruta. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mm. then my grand, then they moved to Kembu. Mm -hmm. so that's your paternal or maternal? That is my mat paternal side okay. of the family. Mm -hmm. They are based in Kembu, mm -hmm. a place called Ikino. Mm. Mm. Kino? Yes. Oh, Iki okay. Ikino. Okino, yes. Okino is in Gidongori. It's in Gidongori, yeah. yeah so okay. that's where my family is. Yeah. Uh, I think my grandmother passed on, my dad passed on. So this is like, a, it's been an opportunity to even just piece their stories together. Mm. Mm. And yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot there about mm. who they were. Mm. Uh, and I remember I was telling you the other time, I remember coming to town and my, my, my shushu can still recognize some of the roads yeah. by their old names. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So. Really a city girl. Yeah, and, and, and what about your maternal uh, side of the My family? maternal side of the family. So my mother is from a place called Kanyoni. It's in Gatondo North. Mm. I think I've been there once, mm. and that was to bury my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And then they moved to Jucha. Mm. And the, the story is she went to work as a house help in Moranga, mm -hmm. and the lady who had hired her mm. moved to Kibera. Mm -hmm. So that's how my mom ended up in Kibera. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. So you're originally from uh, Mount Kenya region, central, particularly Kiambu. You are Kiambu. part of the Kiambu <laughs> votes on both sides. <laughs> yes, on both sides, Kiambu votes. Yeah. yeah. And then so you, um, you get born here in Nairobi, in Kibera. Uh, what were your parents doing and how did they meet? 
Hmm. So my dad used to run a grocery shop. Mm -hmm. My gra my mother used to work as a household for someone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Buying vegetables. I think that's how they met. That's yeah. the story. Yeah. Yeah, and they were together for like 30 years until my dad passed on. Okay. And are you the firstborn? I am the firstborn in a family of six. Oh. Two two brothers and three sisters. Mm. Yes. And how, how do you? What do you remember about growing up now? Mm. With, uh, and is there a huge gap? No, no, no. Like mm. we are two, two, two years. So <laughs> my <so> brother, <laughs> my brother is just two years younger. Okay. What do I remember growing up? Mm. It was, it was a different kind of kibira. Mm -hmm. I remember it being cleaner. Mm. <laughs> so Nairobi Dam had water. Yeah, and Nairobi Dam was something. <laughs> it was. It was a dam. And it was mm. huge because mm. I went to a nursery school just bordering the mm. dam. There was mm. a lot of water spots. Mm. So, yeah. So, I, I remember just a happy childhood. Mm. And I, I think at that point, at that point, is not. I don't, I don't remember at a point feeling grew up in Kibira, born in Kibira, you're poor. Mm. I think that just came on later. Yeah. But yeah. at that point, you're just that a child. That association was never that. There. Yeah, that association mm. was never really there. So, mm. it's just a happy kind of childhood. Um, what can I really remember? Uh, yesterday I was thinking this, I was thinking about things about my time as a child that has defined me. Mm. And I like houses with very big windows. Mm. <laughs> so, and that I remembered our house used to be so dark. I think it's the way those slum houses were built. Mm. Windows could have been a security question. Yeah. So house was so dark, so when you get in, you could even see the next person. Mm. So I think growing up, I've always been so obsessed with houses, <laughs> with natural light. Yeah. And, Huge windows. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Interesting. And what kind of firstborn were you? Mm. When I hear stories from my sibling now, mm -hmm. I wasn't the best kind of firstborn. <laughs> rough? No, the uh, I was, you know, I was a quiet, good child. Okay. So every time they were sent home, mm. they would be asked, hey, you see Quaker, sister from Kubo. Mm. And I remember there's one teacher it's when we were like. in lower primary. Mm could not believe the three of us were the same family because mm. my brother and sister, they had to be sent home severally. Okay. And here was a girl who didn't speak to anyone in mm. class. Mm. <laughs> so I think I was just a quiet kind of sister. Which school is that? Uh, for Shadra Kimalel, it's... Oh, same area? No, it's on Ngumo. It's in mm. Ngumo Estate. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you did your entire primary school there? Yes, I did my entire primary school mm. there, then went to um, Kagwe Girls. Before even Kagwe? Yes. How was, so not only were you not being chased from school because you're doing remarkably well, <laughs> <laughs> how was, uh, what are your memories for primary school? Mm, memories from primary school. Who do you school? remember the most? <laughs> I remember two people. Yeah. One was a girl called Regina Mweni. Mm -hmm. Her mom was a nurse, I think, mm -hmm. and they used to live in Kenyatta. Mm. Uh, I, I think it's the first time we went to a house and you're like, huh, I want different. Mm. And I think there was just that needing, there's just a world beyond Kibira. And mm. I, I kind of started there. Mm. Uh, what else do I remember? I used to love to read a lot. Mm -hmm. So I remember just being quiet and reading a lot mm. uh, during that period of my life. Mm. Uh, like I said, I was really quiet. Mm. There's a time. I think must have been class eight or seven. Mm. I was in the newsmaker book, and the teacher wanted to know <laughs> who did they talk to. Like mm. it was, ended up forgiving the entire class. Mm. Like okay, yeah. So I think uh, I, yeah, mostly just quiet life. <laughs> mm. What 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 did you enjoy as subjects? Hmm. History, English. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we used to call it what at the time? GH GHC. GHC. Yeah, yes. now Geography it's moved to theory. SST. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did enjoy it. Uh, the history part of it. Yeah. Literature, math, not so much. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and and so are you all in the same school with the siblings? Yes, we were all in the same school, but mm. uh, later they were moved to either academies or mm. different schools. But yeah, we kind of mm, started mm. studying at Shadra Kimalo. Um, what was, I'm, I'm trying to get a, a good hold of the time it was, mm -hmm. um, and what were like the, um, the things that you're growing mm -hmm. up seeing, what was the political environment, what was the <laughs> entertainment environment, like what, as a child, how was, what do you remember about the, just the, 
the political, economic, social, environmental context. Mm. As a child. Mm. I remember two things, especially when I'm in primary school. Mm. One is the death of Jaramogi. Right. And the reason I that remember mm. <laughs> is there's a lot of celebration in the house. Yeah. And as a kid, you're so confused, you know? Someone yeah. has died, where is mm. all this excitement mm. around me? Mm. But it's later you'd understand it's the Kikuyulu mm. <laughs> conversation that mm. Jaramogi has died without sitting on the seat, which I think for Kikuyus at the time was something big. Mm. So I think in later life, I keep remembering that there's that memory of... Mm. Uh, the Luo Kikuyu thing mm, happening mm, at that moment. Mm. And for me at that time, mm. I, I, I think I was also in primary school. Yeah. Um, my primary school was called Kimathi. Okay. Kimathi Primary. Just next at the entrance of of, of, of the of the school, we okay. were just bordering Jerusalem. Okay. And in Jerusalem there was a fa the Odinga family had a home. Uh, they would make an ugali, and I'm not exaggerating, <laughs> that was bigger than the children. Like okay. it was so big, and then everyone from everywhere could come and eat from uh, from it as part of the it's called Maumbolezi, the um, yeah, the Maumbolezi. Okay. They'd come and just, and it, it went on like for the entire week, and um, they would provide a lot of tea, and that ugali would never be ending. Like they would <laughs> cook and replace, cook and replace, cook and replace. So as as uh, people who are going to Kimathi and that was our route would find that very intriguing so i i, I yeah that that context is, is is good to just recall alongside yours <laughs> okay yeah yeah but you're saying there were two sort of memories that um, you remember around the political economic even entertainment um what did you grow up listening to or watching Okay, so the second political thing was, it's not really political, but it was huge. Mm -hmm. The 1997 bomb. It was when the uh, bomb was. Yeah. Mm. And I think I remember it because I think the first stories I had was about Moi bombing the country. Mm. <laughs> Later I tried to connect why so would mm. a whole community think it was yeah. had anything political. Yeah. But I think it was mm. also a political the moment. Bomb last year. Yeah, mm. so mm. I, I think those are like just two memories when you had grown up speaking and yeah. now later when you you reflect you're thinking something must have been going through mm. Mm. either it's my parents or neighbors mm. for them to have to think to think in that a particular way. way. To think in a particular way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, interesting. And for <laughs> for for as a child, entertainment, culture, okay. church. So my dad was a pastor mm -hmm. my whole growing up. So there's a whole of Sunday school nice. and the thinking I'll grow up to be an evangelist. Mm. But then also growing from Kibera, there's a whole lot of reggae music. So mm. I think <laughs> I connect a lot with reggae music because yeah. that's what you grow up listening. Yeah. So I never kind of, kind of shifted between those kind of music. Mm. Either it's Kikuyu gospel or mm. reggae, it's the mm. memory music that you mm. grow up mm. with. <laughs> so the, those two things. Yeah. But uh, there was a lot of Sunday school, mm. a lot of people coming to the house because hey, you yeah, are the child of a house. pastor. Yeah, so you're a pastor's kid, <laughs> yes, uh, so for sure. Yes, I was a pastor's kid, for yeah. sure. Did that come with any form of stigma or any kind of association? I think there's a lot of respect. Mm. Mm, for him as a pastor, he's also uh, like a businessman. So mm. I, I feel like growing up, there's a lot of respect for him on mm. both ends, mm. being a pastor and being a businessman. Mm. And looking looking back, I think he was a fair business person. Mm. Mm. So growing up in Kibera, we, we never ha people never really had piped water, mm. but we used to sell water. Mm. And oh, you are the source of water. <laughs> we were the source of water, mm. post office box. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, when there's a shortage, people would actually sell the water higher. Mm. But he, would, he wouldn't do that. Mm. He would just keep to the same normal price. Mm. Yeah, so it's something I think I remember and he got respected mm. for. That's good. That's good because when he gets respected, then you, as a family also, you know, you ride on the respect that your father has. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, nice to know that you had a, just a happy... Um, a happy, nice childhood, and I'm sure as you reflect now and as a parent, you you want to provide nothing but you know the same kind of environment for, for yeah, yeah. True. That's that's nice. So um, your primary school, then you are going to say that the next part you go to is which high school? Uh, I went to it's called Precious Girls, Precious Blood Girls in Kagwe. 
Kagwe. Yeah, it's in Githongori. In Githongori. Yes. Oh, PB are many? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay, yeah. Them. Yeah. The lesser known PBs. Well. The lesser known PB. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And how is how is it there? Um, so your girls school only. It's a girls school only. Mm-hmm. It's Catholic. Mm. Of course, my parents are happy that I'm going to a Catholic school or to you know a, a good Catholic school. Mm. Uh, yes, and yeah. I, I think before I go so much into school, I just wanted to just go back from high school. Okay. So. Uh, I go to Kagwe, my parents kind of have a shop, so school fees is not a big deal. Mm-hmm. But I think it's the, it's, I think what connects more to my work is the coming back and the lot of kids I went to either to Shadrock or grew up couldn't go to mm-hmm. high school. That's, mm-hmm. I remember, yes. So mm-hmm. I did go to Kagwe Girls mm-hmm. for four years. Mm-hmm. And I just Mm. It was a, just a normal mm. girl school. school. But you are a, a teenager at this time, so yes, I'm a teenager. How, how is how is a uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so there's the going to a place with the kids from different places. Yeah. And I think for the for the biggest part of it, I, I don't mention that I'm from Kibera, mm. not for any specific reason. Mm-hmm. It's mostly because I was quiet, mm. so I never really came up a lot, mm. but. Yeah, it, it was a good experience because I get to interact with people from different neighborhoods, mm. people with different class stories. Mm. Mm. And I think I'm beginning to to think I want different. Mm. Like, I have to work really hard because yeah. I'm not going back to Kibila. Yeah. I have to really yeah. so get, get out. So it sort of begins to inspire you for Yeah, it for begins more. to inspire me. Mm. And um, I think at that point I'm deciding, hey, hey, with all purposes, I want to be a lawyer. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yes. Mm. So the... So he, for lawyers, so he, the history and um, you know that's taking you, you. You're needing to focus on that subject quite a bit. And no, it's just history, but it's just defining. I'm beginning to read a lot of books and thinking. Uh, I think high school is that point. You got from a Trufena the city nurse, I think. Oh, as the um, oh, set book. It's a set book. Mm. Anna, their hostess. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, mm, I don't mm. want those two. Mm. And I want something different here. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Interesting. And, <laughs> um, do you have fond memories with uh, other students, other teachers in, 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 in high school? I think so. Either because of my work, I'm still friends with people I went to high school with. Right. So I think I have fond memories mm. of just interacting. Mm. Uh, being inspired to do something different. Mm. Yes, so uh, my friend is the person I'm still friends with is called Jane Kinyanjui. Mm-hmm. We're not in the same stream, but there's just that connection. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And you've continued? Yeah, we've continued to be. We went to, went to campus together. Oh, nice. nice. <laughs> and now being moms together. Oh, so <laughs> fantastic. We went to college together. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow, that's a life. Uh, <laughs> It's yeah, a it's the, that, these life journeys yeah, yeah. that you've shared together. Yeah. Um, did you complete and pass the way you wanted to? Yes, I completed, mm-hmm. passed, uh, just the way I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Yes. And 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 um, I had a gap year or just went straight to university? Mm, no, I had a gap year of mm-hmm. two years. Mm-hmm. Or two years. Yes, it was. There's a whole of drama i think there was a strike from the lecturers yeah the university i was going to had mm. a long strike mm. so we had a gap of two years what did you do in that period i went to strathmore mm-hmm. and did accounts mm. 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 till cpk see and then i just did the thing section one to two okay all right some points i never really giving yourself the, the proper <laughs> grounding for, for it huh? uh, i never quite yeah yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then I had to actually go to school out of Nairobi, so there's a kind of difference. Oh, which campus? Uh, Moi. Oh, you? Uh-huh. Mm. So how was, how was, how was that? Mm. I, I, I th- I'm trying to think about <laughs> what could have been defining at that point. Mm. So there's a two years break, but in the two years break, I'm still living in Kibera mm-hmm. with my parents. Mm. Still run a shop. Mm. But I think uh, at that point there's a lot going on. So, uh, and I think looking back, you're thinking about those triggers about community. Mm. So I used to be very good friends with a guy. I'm thinking, oh, he was a guy in my neighborhood. We used to be very good friends. Mm. 
uh, and growing up you know, you know like being a girl in Toto mm. Pasta mm. <laughs> my dad had a rule if you need to talk to someone especially of the opposite sex mm. you bring them home mm. so i think so there was allowed if you're talking in the streets but bringing home mm. you, you okay i think mm. it's as a parent i, mm. I get the logic about mm. that mm. so at one point i come to from school and i'm told he was gunned down and the the reason it comes up i think at this point is it becomes so often every time i come back i'm told nakumkanani he was gunned down or mm. killed by a mob mm. so it becomes uh, now as an adult i know uh, my story and theirs are so interwoven so mm. the how i see the world mm. so at that point there is a lot of that mm-hmm. and you thinking uh, I don't want to come back to this place mm. that has all these mm. stories happening. Mm. But also knowing every time you told that you have to go see their mom because you knew them mm. and offer condolences. Mm. So there was a lot of that happening at mm. that point. And I think in many ways uh, inspired my choice of what I wanted to do mm. as I was going to campus. Mm. Mm. And I think just being a lawyer, it's mm. from a sense of justice, mm. knowing so many people killed without due process. Mm. So I think that could have cemented why I really wanted to do law because mm. initially I'd been admitted to do literature mm. which I think I I could have I, I did for a few months before mm. I had to, the interfaculty went through mm. but I think at that point mm. I'm thinking that sense of justice yeah. and wrong mm. is becoming a little bit clearer mm. to me. Mm. Yeah. Interesting that it's a personal experiences that are driving you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, at uh, that point, yes. Yeah, at that point. So you you swap, um, you do the interchange, you swap, you you study law for f- four years. Yes. And so you are constantly in uh, Moi. Yes, I was Nelred. constantly in Moi. Mm. But it was too expensive to come to Nairobi mm-hmm. <laughs> and too far, especially. Mm. So you'd actually just go mm. and stay an entire semester. Mm. But I had family there. Mm. One of my uncle mm. actually moved to Eldoret to build the university. Oh. Yeah, he's a mason. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, he moved from Kiambu mm. when they were building the university. Mm. He was one of the masons that were doing, so he moved mm. there. So there was mm. family. Oh, so there was a, a place you could, should there be anything, <coughs> you know, connect with quickly. Yeah, yeah, there was family yeah. in Eldred. Yeah, mm. and how is campus? What do you remember? This time now you're, you're past being a late teenager. You're probably in your early 20s or still there about. Yes, yeah, just around 19. Yeah, so 19. how is your life and... <laughs> What's exciting you at that time? Um, so the first week, I think the first few months I was supremely excited about university. Mm. There are a lot of friends, uh, club activities, mm. so you just move on with the waves. So, mm. uh, but I think before the end of the first year, we moved to town campus, which mm. is a different. It's a different, it's a different environment. It's a different environment. Uh, less control because mm. you're not in the mm. university mm. you're not really in the university grounds because mm. you had to stay outside mm. hostels outside so mm. i don't know i think the excitement of campus kind of dimmed mm. in a place that um, i think i'm a very structured person mm. this didn't give a lot of space for structure <laughs> <laughs> mm. yes mm. but yeah did you join any clubs any extracurricular things that would occupy a bit more of your time you mean that was an option this one you were just we were like the pioneers of the university yeah. there wasn't a lot of that yeah unless you kind of build it mm. yeah mm. but i think for that it's just connected with a couple of people that you're mm. still friends with mm. Mm. but not a lot of that mm. and then the proximity to town you know yeah. in in the rural campus mm. you had to entertain mm. yourself a lot here yeah. <laughs> if your body just go to town yep. <laughs> so there is not mm. even an opportunity to even build or be in all those clubs and how was Eldoret as a town at the time hmm. it was quiet i remember two or three bars mm. <laughs> <laughs> there the can't have been many so mm. it was it was really, uh, really a quiet town mm. yeah mm. Mm. not a lot of activity i mean it's very different from what yeah i think i've right. been there recently it's quite different Voice or us, yeah. <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> it is quite different yeah, yeah yeah um but nonetheless you enjoy your campus period yeah i enjoyed yeah. my campus period. you study law as it should be studied law mm. i did enjoy my time i think also because it's if you love to read it's a lot of stories mm. and connecting with stories so mm. i feel like it was a good opportunity for me mm. yes did you continue with the bar no mm. i only did my four year in campus mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yes. What happened after? Mm, usual story. So that okay. is around 2007. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the political climate is a little bit different and yep. having grown up in Kibera, it, it was it was really bad in mm. 2007. Mm. So I come home and it's different. Mm. So my parents are no longer around in the shop as they used to do mm. uh, as a result of the effect of post-election. And the other kids also needing school. So I, I did not join bad school, mostly initially because of money. Mm. But later, because I was already enjoying what I was doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> so decided not to go back. Mm. But yeah, mm. so I never got a chance to go to the bar. And, but you started doing other things? Yes. Mm -hmm. So right before, uh, right before graduation, mm -hmm. I'm in town and I remember because a friend of, the friend I mentioned, Jane, we were just, just from school waiting to graduate. Mm. So dropping cvs in the city you mm. know it's, mm. I, right in now it's email. no no in town in, in nairobi, nairobi. Mm -hmm. and i ran into this lady and she remembers me as she was my teacher in pre-primary pre that's nursery school wow <laughs> and she claims i hadn't changed i still look the same way <laughs> <laughs> that was flattering nicely <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm thinking for a teacher to remember somebody from preschool mm. anyway so uh, we talked like, how are you? What are you up to? Like, hey, I'm just about to graduate. Mm. She, she gives me a card mm. of someone she'd met in New York mm. that was doing advocacy work mm -hmm. uh, along youth movement. It's mm. like, hey, write them an email and see. So mm. I wrote an email and I was given an internship at a place called World Youth Alliance. Mm. And in many ways that shaped me mm. because then now I meant uh, law school is not an option, but there's something I can be doing. Mm. So I did get started on mm. an internship that was life in changing. line. Mm. It was life changing because mm. I had never heard about NGO work. Mm. I know people think if you grew up in Kibera, you knew a lot of them. That was has not That's wasn't the case. always the case, mm. and they actually concentrated on one side, like the side I grew mm. up. Mm. I can't remember of any yeah. growing up. I mean, there was. There was what was more severe in, <laughs> in like the Makinis and other places. Yeah. yeah there, there was Ayani and where you're from weren't necessarily considered as much Kibra. <laughs> no, probably it's because it's so interior. Yeah. Like it's unsafe for you to even work there. Mm. <laughs> mm. So probably that okay. could explain the mm. reason. So if I would go back and choose that place would have needed support more because mm. it's really, really mm. interior mm. of it. Yeah, but yeah, so I get to understand about working development, mm. um, learning UN language documents. So mm. It was a good experience. World but then it was Youth just Alliance. an internship. Yes. Yeah. So your first internship at World Youth Alliance. Sure. Um, you, it shapes a lot of what um, you do. What were your primary initial things and how did the internship look like at the time? Uh, so the primary thing, it's a human rights organization. So mm -hmm. it's... I, the, fa the first ones were a training on human rights. Mm -hmm. and I remember being so absorbed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, mm -hmm. learning around what is it, Eleanor Roosevelt, mm -hmm. reading about books she books written about her. Mm -hmm. The one I remember the most is Making the World New. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting interested in the world of diplomacy mm -hmm. and all that. So mm -hmm. it was, and it's connecting a bit with your law anyway. Yeah, it's connecting a lot with my law and also it's connecting a lot with my life and I think that um, there's something especially growing up in Kibera in the younger years mm -hmm. there's a lot of mob justice mm. and you know I think there's a part it happens a lot you cannot think it's okay mm. but now when you're thinking about human dignity and realizing that that was robbed of not just my friends but many people I knew that mm. you, you stole something the whole community just comes down on you mm. without spanning you down and mm. just beating you to death. So there's, there's a lot of anger there knowing oh, something could have been done differently mm. in, in terms of human dignity mm. and rights. So mm. there's a lot of shaping, I think, of what would become of my career at that point mm. during that particular internship. Human rights is large. Yeah. And there are many issues, some of which are contentious. Mm -hmm. Do you begin to have like internal contention with, <laughs> with uh, the ideas and ideals around human rights. Yeah, I think so. And also 
you know, there's this conversation before you don't think about poverty as a human right issue, yeah. but now it's beginning to come like that shouldn't have happened mm. or mm. that shouldn't be happening mm. now. Like mm. people shouldn't be that poor, yeah. you know. So a lot of that is luck shouldn't be in that way. Luck shouldn't be in that way, mm -hmm. and so there's a lot that is beginning to form mm. whether it's anger or looking back and thinking how oh, things should have been different or life is actually should and is different mm. so a lot is formed during i think mm. those three four months that mm. i'm interning mm. at world youth alliance mm. they were based in town mm -hmm. just oh, is this building the new co the, the cooperative bank house okay okay yeah. and so you receive this training on human rights do you go and train others like where does it besides the training what else no, at the end of the interviews, at the end of the internship, I go back to school and mm -hmm. I graduate. Mm -hmm. And then I think at a point, they super impressed that I'm picking up this with a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And they do offer me to go and intern at the UN in New York. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I was not able to get a US visa. So okay. that was mm -hmm. not in the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that couldn't be a reality. Mm -hmm. But they also have uh, offices in Brussels, mm -hmm. so they attempt to send me in Brussels, mm -hmm. but that still doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. So now I uh, internship it's done. It didn't work. Those two big op two big opportunity that could have been life defining and what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I have to go back to Kibera mm -hmm. as I try to figure out work. Mm -hmm. And now because I'm understanding more about community development organization, I actually search one out and mm -hmm. I found one that I worked for as a volunteer for a couple of years mm -hmm. it was called kibira community development agenda mm -hmm. now it was not based in my neighborhood it was based in line mm -hmm. yes so I, mm -hmm. they were running a community paper mm -hmm. so i just offered to volunteer to write mm -hmm. and mostly i wasn't really writing about human rights but mm -hmm. mostly stories about just growing up in kibira mm. yes the issues that the, the everyday issues the, the everyday issues mm. the everyday stories mm. yes mm. Uh, so i think i'm there for a year or two who would the who would the publication be targeted towards it was uh, targeting people in kibira okay yeah so, so it's their stories to, like, to them it's their story to them or just framing their stories mm. differently mm. yes and or just uh, it's a magazine raising or issue. It was a mag. No, it was not newspaper. Mm. Yeah. So distributed locally for for you purchase or it was given out. No, it was uh it was distributed for free because mm. it was funded mm. donor funded. Mm. So it was distributed for free. But I think also the donor would distribute the story online mm. to the audiences mm. or at other the time funders. online was <laughs> Yahoo and Hotmail. Could have been Yahoo. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A O N. Mm. Okay. Um. So after the year with with uh, the Kibera CBO, so I'm still at the Kibera CBO, mm -hmm. and the are uh, the were funded then by an organization called MS Kenya. It's huge. It's based in Denmark. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, when I'm there, you know, now I'm beginning to understand a lot of things. I I used to submit stuff now as a member of Kibera for projects so mm -hmm. i did write one of the projects we we're doing that got picked by the world bank institute mm -hmm. and they invite me to some place mm. okay, in brussels mm. <laughs> to go and present mm. uh, about governance and human rights mm -hmm. so this time because it's a different invitation it's the world bank that it actually does go through mm. and i i go to mm. brussels mm. for it was a conference con world bank conference mm. uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, and I think your that first. It, this is your first international trip. This is my first international trip mm. through Addis. Mm. <laughs> yes. How was that? Mm. I probably can define it through the words of an ex-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I connected through Addis. Mm -hmm. So, and when I go to Brussels. Uh, I've read a lot about where you're staying because they don't, it wasn't the way and you'll find somebody there to pick you up. Mm -hmm. Internet also is not a big thing, a smartphone, so mm. you've written down instructions Every of where you're going. Thing, yeah. And then I, there's a guy there asking direction. I'm thinking, we're going the same place mm. with this guy. Mm. <laughs> and then he's trying to convert money to euros. I'd mm. already done that. So I had prepared a lot because mm. there was, it was my first time. There's a, a lot of anxiety. Mm. Yeah, so that was my first international trip. Mm. I make a lot of good friends mm. and connections. Mm. 
and yeah, I think the beginning of many. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I come back and still doing a lot of work with mm. that World Bank organization, mm. uh, mostly online, but they have a lot of conferences. Mm. And I think the only, at that point, I think I was the only girl from Africa that mm. had applied. Attending. And had applied. Mm. So there's a lot of opportunity that comes with that. Mm. Uh, so for the next two, three years, I was doing a lot of work with that youth network. It was called Global Youth Anti-Corruption. Mm. I'd even help them organize for the second conference in Nairobi. Mm. So, uh, oh, they chose that the second one should happen in Africa, in, in Nairobi. In Nairobi. Oh. <laughs> and now you're, the, you're key in organizing. You're sort of like the key person, yeah? <laughs> and then I, I remember even before the Nairobi meeting, we have this young man who... They, they were asked to vote for someone to lead mm. and they're like oh you're the only girl you mm. get to vote and i'm like no 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 how are you gonna vote for mm. a guy can we mm. just do the whole process mm. but they still ended up voting for mm. me so mm. i get to lead the network in the movement for mm. a couple more years but then it's really a volunteer position mm. and when i come back i'm still doing work with this community-based organization because that's work now uh, they pay there's no pay but mm. it's travel so there's a lot of allowances ah, that all right. and then the 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 ngo now in kibira is starting to make a lot a bit of money so mm. i do, do get paid i think some bit of money to mm. just mm. stay around mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah that was mostly a volunteer position yeah. but also i think from traveling there i'm beginning to think there should be more like yeah. i should be doing more yeah you're getting exposed a lot i'm getting more. exposed mm. and then there's a one of their funders mm. did actually come for a meeting. You know mm. the way they do, what are they called? Uh, Funder showcasing kind <laughs> of thing. <laughs> you know, they, they, they're called meeting. Like when the funders come to site visits. Site visits, yeah. right. Yeah. So one of the funders does come for a site visit. Mm. And uh, I don't know, I think also because now your energy is from energy of other young people from mm. around the world. I'm mm. actually all activists there. Eh? Mm and dissing their program program a lot and they're like okay you can do better come design it from our mm, office and mm. that's how i end up getting a job at action aid <laughs> nice. to now design program that i think have a chance because i was telling them whatever you're designing does not have a chance yeah, to understand the <laughs> so the, yeah. um yeah i'm tasked to come and design youth programs mm. for young people mm. that can actually have a life-changing mm. Uh, impact and that's a huge undertaking yeah it was a huge undertaking mm -hmm. so it's a different experience mm. um within a year managing the whole national program mm -hmm. so traveling a lot for work but mm. locally then mm. yes what were some of the programs that you put together <laughs> or helped design oh uh, mostly it was a governance organization mm -hmm. so i think supporting young people to be angry in the right way mm, <laughs> and mm. demand for Channel rights. Channel their anger <laughs> to the right direction. Yeah, the, there's a little bit of economic empowerment mm -hmm. programs mm. and um, which one can I remember? Just training young people in mm. businesses. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's fulfilling, right? Yeah, yeah. At that point it was, uh, I'm feeling fulfilled mm. and, you know, like, what can I say? I had this unbridled enthusiasm of mm. ending poverty, you know, I'm at a point I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, it's possible. So I, th I think that was a good energy to to build on and getting to, what do you call it, to define what's, what's becoming of my life. Mm. Yes, yeah, so at that point I'm still working with ActionAid, but I'm still very attuned with the other young people globally that mm. I've had a chance to meet. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I applied to be a youth advisor for a very huge NGO. It's called Civicas, based in South mm -hmm. Africa. Mm. And actually, once I apply most of this thing when I was there, I would get through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there was a lot of that serendipity mm. and opportunity mm. to travel, meet young people. That uh, Does it matter that you are female? Later, I would realize, mostly mm. because I think for most young women, they were not applying. Mm. In most cases, I would go and later mm. you'd learn you actually one of the only female that applied so therefore so I think that helped yeah that helped, <laughs> so I think that that helped a lot yeah yes that's that's good and now you acknowledge it and yeah. you, you, you. so is there um i'm very careful in asking this but is there is there privilege that comes with like being um being an informed and uh go-getting uh female yeah, I would think even now I feel that mm. like there are chances I would get because 
you you applied your room mm, mm. <laughs> the quota decided so i feel there are opportunities mm. like that and also i think coming through you you're from kibira you hear the story mm. was mm. was compelling mm. enough to mm. just mm. be given that opportunity so mm. i appreciate there's a lot that has come because when you're a woman mm. you're from a slum is that story so mm. there's a lot of opportunities mm. in my younger years that were just mm. simply based on that mm. yes. where else do you travel to that you remember Hmm. Okay, the ones is, okay, I would remember the ones that made an impact. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think l- the first time I went to London, mm-hmm. I felt like I'd been here and I think it's reading all those books mm-hmm. Kinagata Christie yeah. and I was there with him there was a lot like I felt like I've been here before mm, mm. so the the, mm. the first time in London there was a feeling like oh this sounds familiar or just playing monopoly mm. <laughs> so the stations kind of make sense yeah. uh, look familiar mm. and I think uh, Colombia it was a really long trip mm. but also how long is actually Colombia from Nairobi I didn't go through Nairobi I went through Amsterdam I think oh you are coming from why you why you are you here No I was in Amsterdam. Oh you were in Amsterdam. Yeah. Okay, then for a Colombia. different reason. Okay. Then I went to Colombia. How is how far is that? I don't know, I don't have a clear memory. Yeah. But I do have a clear memory of getting the visa to Colombia. Mm. <laughs> But I think it's because not many Kenyans went there. The embassy was particularly friendly. Mm. Even I hadn't paid for the fee. They gave me a card to take me to village market to pay and come back. I'm oh, like, wow. okay. <laughs> Being Uh, from struggling to get a visa in so many countries yeah. this was just a different experience uh, of being welcomed <laughs> yeah. so, so that was a, i think I, i i did enjoy that trip because it was mm. totally a different opportunity mm. Mm. yes mm. Mm. Yeah. and mostly most of the conferences would be either to attend conf- most of the travels would be for conference purposes yes conference or trainings trainings mm. or some a few writing mm. uh, training or just being paid to go right mm, yeah mm. documents to write like document ra- rapporteur rapporteur yeah and also just to listen in and write stories mm. of how the mm. conference was mm. yeah mm. that's 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 good because then i mean as you're saying this girl from kibra <laughs> is having all these opportunities traveling the world um interacting with different kinds of uh, people from all walks of life it must be shaping a lot of your um views and perspectives yeah it, it, it does this the feeling of being extremely lucky mm. and also feeling we need more opportunities for young people mm. like uh, you, you begin understanding especially now as you have different conversation mm. of how people get like you go to a conference and having conversations and you feel oh these people are related to either politician mm. or they know someone they mm. got there because through a long chain and for mm. me probably I just applied mm. so it's just that feeling that oh it's not fair but mm. also yeah. starting to feel extremely lucky that you're mm. able to tap into this opportunity mm. yeah but there's I, i think the anger still building on about mm. the unfairness of the world mm. but also i think there's a lot of appreciation yeah. of the possibilities yeah. I, i like that i love that i, I mean <laughs> experiences are the ones that shape our perspectives and if our perspectives are more refined yeah and are more informed by virtue of experiences we've had then there is a win in, in in every in every regard so where does your story move from there <laughs> from connecting i mean you say you worked there for a couple of years traveling quite a bit um what what, what happens next um, i was also thinking like uh, uh, the question of serendipity i feel mm. it's played a really big role in mm. my life so mm. uh, that ngo that i used to work in mm-hmm. i'd found a book there written by the uh, written by a lady called Jacqueline Novogratz mm-hmm. so about anger and poverty and people trying to do something about mm, it mm. so i read you know now we have internet of mm. course i go check it out mm. and i'm um, i'm thinking oh she's coming to nairobi soon mm. so i would like mm. to meet her mm-hmm. <laughs> but then they have an, an opportunity for a fellowship mm. so i do actually apply for for the fellowship mm-hmm. and i get in mm. <laughs> but everybody else was either doing business or doing something the who do I remember doing social change in that internship but if I was mangi think we were in the same class mm. so then 
I think that was also something changing. Like you read the story about a woman and now you can meet her, talk mm. to her. Mm. I'm thinking, I'm beginning to think that there's a lot of possibilities. Mm. So I, I joined the, in the fellowship the for fellowship. a year. Yeah. You meet a lot of different people mm. from is it different brands. Is it in person? No, it's in person. So mm. there, there are a lot of a lot mm. of meeting and connecting with people from different worlds. So mm. I'm thinking, you know, that that thinking is more to, to mm. the world yeah. from those conversations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's kind of very life shaping as mm. well. Mm. Yeah. That mm. you wrote a story. You mm. don't even have a business, and you thought it was smart enough to invest mm. in. So mm. I'm thinking, okay, mm. there's something to build on here. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. That, that, that fellowship is uh, it's fantastic. Then it comes at just the right time to build on from what you've been doing, but also to help you refine potentially what you'll be doing next. Yes, to refine and also start thinking because at that time you, I'm, I'm working in the non-profit sector. Then mm. you you learn there's a whole another sector called social enterprise yeah. about building businesses that can help yeah. uh, uplift millions from poverty. Yeah. So there's a lot of also thinking differently mm. about work and mm. also. Uh, it kind of refines how I think about the work I was still doing at Action Aid mm. because we were really a non for profit mm. and you've worked for young people for a long time and mm. you're not changing their lives. You mm. know, for me it was really personal mm. because I've worked with you for a whole year, right? Mm. With donor funding, mm. and in December you'll still come without money and borrow something from me. You know, because mm. I I still have to go and live with these young people, mm. so. It tastes different, so I'm also getting angry with yeah. the non for profit sector. Like, yeah. hey, you're not lifting millions out of poverty as mm. fast as mm. uh, you, you should. Mm. Now, as an adult, I know it's more complex than yeah. that, yeah. but at that age, when you're so young, mm. there's you anger. The energy to. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> and also, you think, uh, I think there's that the beauty of being young. You kind mm. of think it's possible mm. and your anger is justified. And mm. I think that's what why young people are important in mm. the political process. Mm. You, you don't, I'll say, you don't see the lot, you know? You mm. think it's possible, let's mm. make it happen. Mm. Mm. But as an adult, you're so cautious, yeah? Mm. Even now as a design program, mm. it's not as I design them as yeah. a young person. Yeah. Young person are like, we do this, we do this, these mm. people will be poor, right? Mm. Mm. But now you can, uh, it's a whole matrix and yeah. knowing it's more complex mm. than that. And you also, you start looking out more for you. I mean, the older you get, you start looking out more for your own. <laughs> and not your own <laughs> self, but maybe maybe your children, true, true. or your aging parents. Yeah. Somehow you get sandwiched into many things so the, the life decisions and experiences make you make different decisions yeah. than you would when there is a, um, when there is the virility of youth <laughs> yeah, true, yeah, true. yeah 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 and so after the fellowship so after the fellowship i'm still working with action, action aid but also mm. i'm starting to work something for young people in Kibera, this is coming from the younger, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I've been doing this for a while. Mm. I remember I was working with some young people in Kibera. You see from the DC area, mm -hmm. the, these young people that have set shop mm. uh, to, to Vibanda doing different things, yeah. all the way to Ayani. Mm. And you work with them and you come back and they haven't changed. Mm. So there's, there's a feeling, there's, what do you call it? Um, saying. It's quite a long stretch. It's a long stretch. From DC to, <laughs> to Ayani. <laughs> yeah, those two, two shop shops there. Yeah. Uh, there's that the feeling of anger, like mm. you're not doing good enough. Mm. Like, so there's that lens. Mm. So there's some work I started doing uh, with an organization called Living in a Shanty Town. Living in, in a Shanky Town. Shanty Town. Mm. Inspired by a reggae song in the mm. same word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was like, hey, you know, we need to, I need to do something braver mm. than working on a non for profit. Mm. Like, but then he couldn't get funding. So, mm, mm. yeah, long story. It didn't really take off, but I'm it still. Didn't materialize the way you had hoped. <laughs> it didn't materialize the mm. way I had hoped. Mm. Uh, but also, I'm still working with Action Aid. I'm also part of um, uh, the, the, the organization I, m I mentioned called Civicus. Mm -hmm. I was a youth advisor, but mm -hmm. now I'm in the big board, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so feeling I'm in a place I can make real decisions. Yeah. Yes, and also I'm invited at the UN now, mm -hmm. not as an intern to just make a case for mm -hmm. supporting young people. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of travel and yeah. just doing different things mm -hmm. at that period of my life. Mm -hmm. And are you, and what's happening in your social life? <laughs> social life, making friends, mm -hmm dating as I go along. Mm. So there's a lot of meeting new people mm. and mm. not really stable because I was really a lot traveling for work. Yeah. 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 So you'd have, 
um or are you what, what do you call it uh, serially monogamous <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is the person we get to know we get to date <laughs> Um, how can I put that? Mm. I think there's one guy from Zimbabwe and it lasted for a while. Mm -hmm. So there's that, it was long distance mm. and oh. just... <laughs> mm. 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 But, but worse, we'll come back, we'll come to the... <laughs> we'll connect the dots moving forward. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay, all right, all yeah. right. So, um, so now it's past the fellowship, we're continuing with uh, Action Aid and Civicus. Um, do you... This this app now places of impact for you, places yeah. of social impact, also your source of income, um, and and do you transition more? I mean, transition more, yes. So um, still at Civica. So this one period of time, they're having a meeting in uh, Canada somewhere, mm -hmm. I think Toronto, Montreal. Mm -hmm. So I'm so uh, of course being part of the board member. I think with Civicas I also get to travel a bunch. Mm. So this particular board meeting is being held in Montreal. Mm. So I get to I, I I I'm traveling to Montreal and then at the airport, I receive an email from our manager at uh, the Akiben Fellowship mm -hmm. about a job opening. Mm. They were looking for a young person that mm. would do youth work. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, this does sound fun, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I'm still at Action Aid, so mm -hmm. I do apply for mm -hmm. the job. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I'm in now Canada for the conference, they tell me that my application went through, I should do the interview. Mm -hmm. But the interview is in Nairobi, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, and now this is the job, now I'm doing Future First. Mm -hmm. So the founder does come to Nairobi to conduct the interview. Mm -hmm. I request for a Skype interview. They're like, no, we came all the way. Mm. Like, <laughs> we'll, just inter yeah. <laughs> we'll just interview the people that are here. Mm. They did get to interview the people that are there, but they didn't get the right candidate. Mm. So they just emailed me and told me the job is mine. Never wants it. Oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, just serendipity. Yeah. Yeah. So I. What What is it that they were looking for that that <laughs> they couldn't get in other in other another candidate mm. I'm still friends with the founder i probably should ask better mm. <laughs> so uh, i think it is about social capital mm. so how do you create social capital for young people and i think my story connected with that like mm. uh, just because i had access to different networks my life had changed a lot mm. and this was an opportunity to do that for young other young people mm. so i think that is the key right. of what they're looking for building right. social capital for young mm. people mm. So that is around 2012, mm. end of 2012. Mm. Uh, so I come back, they're not here, they've already packed, but mm. they had left the orientation papers on a PDF for me to just figure out what they do. Wow. And then I'll join them in London for a week of training mm. and then come and implement. Mm. So that is 2012. And it's it's future fast, not future fast Kenya at the time. Just future fast. It's future fast UK. Mm -hmm. Yes. What what was future fast about? Now as we <laughs> as we, as we start narrowing to it. All right. So mm. what is future fast about? So I, probably now I can. I know it's not my story to tell, but mm. I think it's an inspiring story. Mm. So the founder of Future Fast UK is of course from UK, and he feels. The reason he's different is because he he did go back to a public school like most kids in the UK, but mm -hmm. his life is way different. It's because mm -hmm. he had a community of support. Mm -hmm. Whether it's at home, the mom was someone in politics, you have that support to help you write a CV mm -hmm. or shape your future. Mm -hmm. But most kids in public schools do not have that. So he went back to his old school to provide that role as an alumni, mm. to support young people in that, to provide mentorship. Mm. So it's basically about that, engaging alumni into mm. the public education system mm -hmm. and social capital. Mm. Uh, so that's what I joined here to do. Mm. So that's what I hired to do. They were looking for? They were looking for a program officer. Mm -hmm. So that is around 2012. So I joined Future First, end of 2012. Mm -hmm. Yes, And to just... Uh, try out the model. So the reason they had picked Kenya, mm -hmm. because the program is actually based in the UK, mm -hmm. is they had done a, a survey, not mm -hmm. a survey, a study, mm -hmm. a global study mm -hmm. on propensity of adults to give back to their old high school. Mm -hmm. And Kenya had one of the highest. Wow. So 
the global average was 52% of adults saying they'd go back to their old school mm -hmm. and give back, mm -hmm. with only 2% doing that. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, 78% of Kenyans <laughs> said they'd give back to their old school mm -hmm. if asked, and mm -hmm. only 1% was doing that. Mm -hmm. So that data that was, that mm -hmm. was good enough data mm -hmm. to influence them yeah. choosing Kenya. Yeah, as and, a project site, yeah. Yeah, and then at that moment, there was also... Uh, a Kenyan lady mm. thought this was a really interesting program and mm. was, support, was willing to help by being in the board and mm. directing, mm. supporting in fundraising for Who is that, UMS? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I will remember. Okay, it was right. right. <laughs> mm, mm. She was called Caroline. She used to work at the UN. Okay. Yes. And so the, the thing that they would be wanting you to do is establish that, yes. that kind of same thing in Kenya. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, we pick 15 schools to mm. get started. What what criteria did you use to pick the schools? Mm. Mostly they had to be in Nairobi for ease okay. of communication. All right. And then the other criteria, I remember being part of picking it, is mm -hmm. you know the category of the school, you want the Kenya, Kenya High and the Sarehe, mm -hmm. but you also want schools like Olympic, mm. Buruburu Girls, mm. I think Kuruma, Ngara Girls, those Mm. Nembu girls, which are in mm. the outskirts, so we wanted to see how the model play out in different schools mm. in Kenya. Mm. It was around 2013. Mm. Yes. Mm. And, and you are successful in getting. To, so how would it look like? Like you would now <laughs> go to the schools, ask them. All right. So mm, WhatsApp wasn't a thing then, but yeah. Facebook was. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just that you for schools like Kenya High you went and they already were doing that so mm -hmm. you're seeing what the gaps are mm. for schools that were not doing that then mm. you get an opportunity to establish it from scratch and the school that made uh, like an impact uh, for me was Dandora secondary okay so I go on Facebook they have mm. a Facebook group mm. I write to several individuals we're mm. having an event at Reformer school in mm. this day kindly show up mm. And true to form, like 10 show up. Mm. And it was my first event. Mm. So you have my boss checking if you're doing the right thing mm. and a lot of pressure. Mm. But I think why that was so huge for me, uh, the students were so quiet and keen. Mm. And one of the teachers said, it's the first time they can see a life out of this dump site. Yeah? Mm. You, you have, because it never happens for schools like Dandora. Mm. You, you live, you live, right? Mm. Even for the teachers, it was a different conversation. Mm. It is, uh, we do get some work done. You know, for, I think for a school like that, you, you train people, you still see them around. Mm. But these are actually a bunch that had left and we were, they were a banker, a strolling mm. teller. They were doing different things. They were doing different mm. things. So it was, it, it had a different energy, a different impact. The students mm. were so quiet. Mm. and. The reason it excites me, it's been like a decade. It mm. happens. It still continues mm. to happen. Like they have a whole forum where mm. students just go back and talk to students. Mm. So I think for that was also life changing, mm. you know, uh, getting the feedback from either the students or the school of what the possibilities are. Mm. It was kind of life changing mm. because I think at Kenya High, you get a different impression because it's already happening. But mm. with a school like Dandora, it was the first time they were having that kind of interaction, mm. it was a little bit different and mm. a different mm. kind of energy. How would you ensure that it is more self-sustaining? Uh, I think for Kenya, that's not really quite a problem because mm. they t there's, there's a culture of it. It happens. What is lacking is the professional support. Mm. So networks go register with the registrar society mm -hmm. and they run like mm. normal association. Mm. So that kind of helps it to sustain. Mm. So if a, school, if a school is able to now engage with a group that's organized, mm. there's the whole... There's a sustainability aspect yeah. to it mm. because then the association is continually recruiting. Mm. The school is mm. continually releasing alumni. Yeah. So it's a very every, sustainable yeah, way. <laughs> every yeah. year there's new members. Mm. So the, I think the problem is now how do you make this loose network, mm. organize them enough mm. to be, I would say, a force. And how record. do you do that? <laughs> how, I mean, with the years that you've been doing this now with with al al alumni, they move very fast. There is mm. the turnover, not turnover, yeah, but they move very fast. New lives, new countries, new, but that connection to the school, how do you make sure it continues to happen in an organized way? In an organized way. So initially we were working directly with school, mm -hmm. but around 2015, we, moved, we shifted our focus to alumni networks. We okay. support alumni networks. Mm. 
and the way we do, we're still figuring it out, but there's a lot of supporting the leaders that are running these institutions. Mm. Like if you're an of, alumni leader. Often who are doing it on a volunteer basis. They're doing it on a volunteer basis. Mm. So we, we have like a package on just how do you, how do you mobilize? How mm. do you, what do you call it? How do you reach out? Mm -hmm. And so we build an alumni management system that makes it easier for them. Online? Yeah, it's an mm. online platform. Mm -hmm. And then I think with the emergence of WhatsApp, there's a lot of that. The mm. whole space of alumni relations changed a lot with mm. WhatsApp, especially mm. in Kenya. True. True. Because people are reconnecting, yeah. even with all the school. Yeah. Like if you talk with a Kenyan, they'll tell you that you're now on a WhatsApp alumni yeah. group. Yeah. <laughs> so like literally, I mean, someone has an, idea, <laughs> has an idea of yeah. how that's happening. Mm. Yeah, mm. So that's beautiful. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of happening. Mm. So I think as an organization, our focus has to be to help government mm. do it. Because mm. the day is when you create a cultural shift, mm. in other, I would say democracies, in, in other countries, there's, there's an expectation of it. Mm. Like you leave school, there's an opportunity and yeah. ways for you to reconnect, mm. but we haven't even built that in mm. our education system. Mm. So one of the ways I think we're trying to do that mm. is closely work with government to see mm. if that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. I think we've made some good strides, mm. but still an opportunity mm. to do a lot. How has, so I mean, that, that has meant getting into the policy space. <laughs> yes, that has meant getting into the policy space. Mm -hmm. mm. So. I think uh, as we do work in, uh, for, so for the longest time, we're still working with small group, mostly mm -hmm. because of funding. Mm -hmm. And also as a funding conversation, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, you're not working directly schools, you're working with alumni in the hope that they impact the education system. Mm -hmm. So it's not a very easy space mm -hmm. for fundraising. Mm -hmm. But I think for general impact, there's a lot mm -hmm. of impact and also mm -hmm for a cultural shift mm -hmm. to it. Has there been a believer in terms of like a funder who <laughs> this, they're like, yes, we see and you're going to back it up with resources. The initial study was funded by Open Society, so okay. I probably think they were a believer or they are a believer. Mm -hmm. And in Kenya, we have like two, uh, we've had two family foundations that thought, mm -hmm. hey, there's something in here worth, mm -hmm. worth investing in. No, the one is based in the UK, okay. another one in the US. Mm -hmm. But the UK program is mm -hmm. properly funded because mm -hmm. it's a question of social capital. Yeah. And they've, over the years, they've collected a lot of data to mm. show this works. Mm. If you connect these young people, mm. there is actually a study done by the University of California mm -hmm. where they tracked mm. people that were engaging with alumni mm. and the life choices they made and mm -hmm. kids who didn't. Mm. And they, there was a clear difference. There's a clear difference mm. because, especially for most of these kids, and I think that would be the kids, even in Kenya, most kids, if you're going to, if you're the first in your family, like mm. I was to go to university, mm. you don't get that kind of support, mm. right? Because mm. who are you asking? Is it your mom, your dad? Mm. They're all new to this. Mm. But if you could get that support in school, yeah. it could be absolutely life-defining mm. for most young people. Mm. And how has, how was building the organization here? <laughs> so establishing it. I'm sure now it's an organization, it's not just... A program. It's not just a program, yeah. Yeah, so for a while it's still a program within the, in the UK mm -hmm. until around 2018 where mm -hmm. we do set up here and have mm -hmm. a local board. Mm -hmm. So building an organization, that's been a tough thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'd worked in international NGOs and, mm -hmm. you know, every other time you think you have the skills to do this, mm -hmm. it's a whole new ball game. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. So we did establish here as a trust. Mm -hmm. and we have a really strong connected board mm. and I think that has given it a chance mm. because they are, they are committed. Most mm. I recruited because there were alumni that mm. were very dedicated, mm. already volunteering time mm. to, for their school. Mm. The key is an opportunity to do this for every other school. So there is there's an excitement there, mm. and a mm. commitment from mm. that, mm. this particular board to mm. do that. Besides the board, do you have like uh, a team? Yes, we have a team. Mm. We have two. We have we have a team of six that just does the day to day. Mm. But also, there is something that was uh, organization defining in twenty in twenty seventeen mm -hmm. when Matiangi was a CS for education. Mm -hmm. We he launched an umbrella body for mm. alumni networks. Mm -hmm. So that you asked about a believer, he was a believer. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he, 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 one of the quotes I think from him was, alumni engagement is civic engagement. Mm. You're giving a citizen an opportunity to engage with education. That's so powerful, they yeah. have quite been a, uh, 
believers mm. in the work we're doing, mm. even mm. within governments. Mm. And when Dr. Amina was the CS for Education, mm. we had an opportunity to work on a policy for mentorship, mm -hmm. but it gave provision mm. for an annual alumni mentorship day in the mm. Kenyan school calendar. Not implemented, but it's in a policy. That's good. Yeah, that is good. So now it's pushing for implementation. <laughs> now we're pushing for its implementation. Mm. So like to just give an opportunity for more schools to be able to engage yeah. that way. I, so uh, the programs, I mean, uh, besides that national level, policy making mm -hmm. um did you expand beyond nairobi yes we expanded beyond nairobi to not just not just to the county to mm -hmm. just more schools mm -hmm. so i think we we have more schools that are that are doing this mm -hmm. not in a structured way mm -hmm. and what we're trying to do is can we get a structured way of doing this because mm -hmm. every other school uh, gets to do it differently yeah. And because of governance issues, mm. some alumni go, you're banned because you, you commit some money, you, mm. there's no accountability, you're not going to do it again. Mm. So you're trying to put guidelines together to see if there's an opportunity to even look at, mm, a, 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 this is a way of financing and resourcing school. Mm. Mm. And just going back in 2019, mm. we were doing our annual report. Mm -hmm. And the way we do our annual report is engaging with the alumni mm -hmm. and getting data. How many students did you mentor? Did you yeah. And then as we were doing the math of the money, we get around $2.6 million mm -hmm. donated to the education system, mm -hmm. but just a handful of school. Mm -hmm. and this is huge money that no one is speaking about mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of alumni giving. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, for the next two years, mm -hmm. we've been making a lot of noise mm -hmm. about the place of alumni giving in the education system. Mm -hmm. One is we acknowledge it's happening, mm. but there's no direction, there's mm. no data there's around no it. There's no accountability. There's no accountability. So trying to see what would that look mm. like. Like, mm. um, uh, if you hadn't prompted me to start with my last story, mm. Mm. <laughs> I would have started with this particular week. Mm. So mm. this is a particularly interesting week for me as Kenyans mm -hmm. because they get admission to high school. Yeah. And it's on Monday that they received yes. whichever school that they're going to be going to yes mm. and for me it's always a very emotional time mm. because i just know how much this means i look back at the kids i grew up in kibira just me going to a different school made a whole world of difference it's not because i had the most most marks it's not mm. because i had the highest number of marks mm. just i went to a, i was lucky enough to go mm. to a good school mm. i remember there's a boy i must have gotten 600 and something wow. that age after seven. He mm. didn't go to a good school, he just mm. went to a car random school. Mm. And later he would get gunned down. But mm. I keep thinking how different mm. his life would have been. If that same Hulikwana scholarship, mm. he would have gone to Lenana, Nairobi, mm. Mm. his life would have turned totally different. Mm. And I feel that's the case for most Kenyans during this week. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. Because we, we, we've, okay. Uh, not to this the education system mm. we've researched very good school well mm. and left a majority mm. totally under resourced mm -hmm. so your opportunity to go to a good school is mm. life changing for most people mm. but that won't be the case for most young people yeah. it won't be the case mm. but I think looking back you think like this week will change the life of so, so many, many young Kenyans mm. and we should make noise about it so mm. one is can we resource school better mm. so that it shouldn't matter Mm. Eh? My, my school Shadrachimal has a secondary mm. I should get a good education there mm. as I would get as, as I got at PB Kagwe right mm. but that won't be the case the, mm. the child who will go to Shadrachimal secondary school the chances will be different the chances will be different mm. and continually we're still doing that mm. and because I work I work with adults who have a chance to look back mm. they can tell like the reason we insist because we know it matters a mm. lot the reason we're so uh invested in which school mm. our kids go is because mm. we really know it matters mm. but mm. so we just a time for as a nation to reflect, to reflect. that on mm. Mm. how many life will just be changed by the decision that was made on monday yeah yeah so i think um, that has continually i think inspires me mm. to do the work we're doing because yeah. we i think we when you ask what our mission is mm. it's to strengthen the public education system mm -hmm. by engaging alumni mm -hmm. so i feel we can use this opportunity to 
make it a reality. Mm. Like you go to a public school, you have the same opportunity. In Kenya, it's not the same. Mm. It depends on the category. Mm. Like and if we categorize it, the, the differences are so stark yeah. that we shouldn't be comfortable with it as mm. a nation. And how do we make more noise? I mean, when, when you talk about advocacy, unless there's a community buying and then unless the mwananchi <laughs> is able to articulate maybe with us with us deep and unless the stories are coming from you know majority of the public then advocacy efforts can be also very can hit a dead end yeah. <clears throat> so how do we increase more noise around this how do we make this for instance um at this week's issue mm -hmm. in, in a way that um you know the choice of public the, the, the choice the, the placement in schools is a table, you know, um, dinner table conversation. Hmm. I think there's opportunity, especially right now in several groups I am talking about budgeting for school. Mm -hmm. So also being very clear, like what does that mean? Mm -hmm. you give, if you give one school 40,000 per capitation, and another one, 7,000 mm. is a government. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to that school? Mm. So I think there's that opportunity for us to look at it that way. Mm. The day we were doing data and you look like a school like Kenya High gets, I think that year was 70 or something million mm. for infrastructure. Mm. Another school gets 2 million. Like mm. you, you, like having that conversation, mm. there's their lives involved here, mm. right? Mm. Whether it's Kenya High and you're sending another school. So I think at this point when we, we're talking about whether it's education reform, I've been part in those conversations. Some mm. are really headed well. Mm. So just being part of those conversations, because they are happening. Mm. They're happening a lot, yeah. but they're not as coordinated. Mm. The other day, I think Kenya Human Rights Commission mm. under Elimubora, they had this conversation mm. just to provide clarity on CBC. Mm. So to continue, the, there is conversation happening. They mm. need to be coordinated better, mm. like the education reform conversation mm. happening, mm. just to mm. put into perspective mm. what this week mm. of us allocating different mm. opportunity to different children mm. means for their trajectory, mm. their life trajectory. Yeah, and it's beyond just this week. It's also the kind of curriculum mm -hmm. that then they have to go through. What's your perspective and what's your reflection on CBC so far? <laughs> Uh, I think because we are the heart of it with a lot of confusion, mm. <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to just stay. Mm. Mm. Uh, but I think there is an opportunity of, if you, there's a study that was done by this Africa a few, a few late last year mm. about young people not having skills. Mm. So I think if we are making, we are improving the curriculum to make sure young people have better skills from a very young age, mm. to even be able to identify this opportunity, I mm. think there is this cause to celebrate mm. and it, it might change the trajectory the curriculum itself mm. where you, if you're equipping young people with standardized skills where they're able to access more opportunity mm. or understand or seek them out themselves mm. i think that is there is some hope in yeah. there yeah yeah and, and also there's a conversation of data and mm -hmm. when I, so one of the time our alumni management system is free mm. and the reason i push especially with my board to make it that mm. I hope we get data mm. that would even inform public, like if you're going to fi finance 2% of the schools, which is the national high, mm -hmm. is, is data correlation that their life actually changes. Mm. And I think if we collect data from alumni, we, we can tell like mm. if it's a worth investment for mm. a nation mm. to just mm. spend so much on this very few school in mm. the hope that these people go on and do better yeah. things. Yeah. But right now we have no data to mm. inform Mm. conversation mm. whether our investing in a few couple of national schools at this school mm. matters it's, it's but it does right. matter i was having friends i was having a conversation with a friend mm -hmm. about her mom and her aunt mm. one went to the name school <laughs> brand mm. school mm. and her mom didn't but mm. she can tell there these are two kids raised in the same family mm. like their self-esteem is different mm. like you just going to so like even just PBU, mm. you, you get a different experience, mm. you you come out differently. Mm. So it could be also thinking about yeah. what is lacking in the schools mm. that would make two different people mm. trained by teachers hired by the teacher service commission mm. to come out with very, feeling very small. Mm. You know? So I think it's, mm. it's a broader conversation. So there's the role of, uh, what's your alumni base so far, like for the association? For the association, so not many are registered. We mm -hmm. still don't have good enough numbers. Mm -hmm. 
but the ones that we've recruited uh, just alumni with that organization are close to half a million that mm. people who have indicated they want to support My their goodness. old school mm. but around networks is around 500 mm. so, 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 so a good number 500 okay 500 500 oh yeah 500. networks mm. but we're talking about networks. but we're talking about 40,000 public schools so there's yeah. a huge work to be done mm. uh, and one of the things that excites me about mm. my work because it's every data so beyond the data we collected in the initial study we've done a lot more data mm. just to see what is happening and the last data we collected in 2020 mm. during covid with this african philanthropy mm -hmm. network mm. uh confirms the earlier data that kenya wants to give but mm. this one had more like 52 percent said they're not giving because there's no platform mm. or program to give mm. so it means if either schools or there was a deliberate mm. effort to mm build these programs and network yeah. we have more kenyans giving mm. or reconnecting with their old school mm. so mm. like i feel it's, it's good numbers for hope mm. yeah mm. Mm. i find it very fascinating that especially after hearing those numbers and the power that uh, numbers it's a it's a movement to it's speak. a movement it's it, it is huge and how much it would impact the education system mm. and also their conversation there's always that are missing like mm. oh, there's, there's actually one study that kenyans the fact that we're not tracking alumni mm. we cannot tell effectiveness of our training at yeah. any level yeah. right so there's a huge missed opportunity yeah. not just for basic even mm. at university mm. level to mm. even tell uh, the effectiveness of our programming mm. or mm. even a curriculum of the curriculum yes so had we collected data well mm. <laughs> over time mm. could have informed cbc <laughs> mm. there, there would have been data to inform mm. cbc mm. on okay eight for four has failed because of this and mm. this yeah mm. but it's not it's How not a question of data been addressed like the gap around data and maybe through even your work like are you able <laughs> no i i know that infiltrating government systems is, <laughs> is 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 not the easiest thing but are you able to um push for that change around data to track and figure out and i know data is also by itself a, a large issue um but yeah w what needs to be done to bring about a difference there uh just going back to government this i, I desire to do that mm. uh so last year i think we we had a meeting with the county board of education just to see uh, in nairobi particularly mm. is this something we can champion mm. so there is that willingness mm -hmm. and i feel as much as we say advocacy is hard mm. during the last kid and decade of my life mm. i've met people who are like yes let's let's try and do this mm. so there's always one is a question of time mm. so i feel like with NEMIS and stuff, mm. with time, governments will have that much data mm. about you from the time you joined mm. okay. uh, primary schools, yeah. university. So yeah. I, I think even when you look at other program, it mm. looks like it's something that we resolve okay. because there are enough chances, mm. there are enough things happening mm. around data with mm. government. Mm. The two or three things that alumni, mm -hmm. not just in their bodies, but if you are alumni, you know, if, if, you, if I'm thinking about I was in... <laughs> Was in Don Bosco. <laughs> you were in Don Bosco. I was in Don Bosco. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And look at us. <laughs> uh, so if I'm looking at as an as an individual, our, our our production crew as an individual, and you're looking at your school, what is the role of an alumnus? Like, not even the association. Just mm -hmm. what are the one, two, th three things you would ask of an of an individual alumnus to do in their school? I would say, especially, I'll just use an example with you and Don Bosco. Mm -hmm. There's a child in Don Bosco mm. who doesn't believe they have a shot. That's and true. just many, many. Co connecting with you. Like, mm. the, the thing about alumni, it's the relatability. Mm. I cannot go to Dandora mm. and try to be relatable. Mm. But when you go and see the alumni giving stories, talking mm. about their dining hall, the dam site, mm. there's a connection, there's like an immediate connection, mm. which I feel as an outsider when I go to school events, mm. but you can feel from alumni it flows. Mm. So that relatability. Mm. One of the alumni I work with, and she's in the board of alumni Kenya, she says when she was young, she wanted to be a housemaid mm. because the only people who left that village mm. went on to become housemaid in the village. Mm. Right now she's huge. She literally managing East Park. Yeah? Mm. So she goes back just for that. Yeah. Like there's a child that needs to know mm. there is more than mm. what, especially when you look at our villages. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And 
not just for me it's kibira when you mm. go and you're different you've done something different i mm. go to my primary school mm. and when you say you school here you can mm. see the kids are questioning it yeah, like, like that mm. like mm. i grew up in kibira this mm. is what i'm doing mm. i know kibira has a lot but in most mm. villages they mm. don't get a chance to see that mm. mostly because you're walking away from the villages we're mm. not going back so that is just my call mm. not even for money Mm. when you the next time you go to your I primary like, school just like go and have a conversation a, and i feel we don't realize just that power mm. of aspiration mm. like there's an aspirational gap yeah. mm. so because it's a field i work in there's mm. a there's a study that was done by they have a long name mm. african network for okay get it mm. <laughs> and one of it it was done in rural areas mm. in slum mm. about aspirational gap mm. the, the reason kids are not trying so hard enough they don't mm. know anyone who has who has made it who has made it mm. so they don't have that or and then overcome some has loops. overcome mm. and their parents like my, both my parents didn't go to school so there is very little there is they love you they provide an education but there's help they can provide so mm. but you as an alumni you mm. can like mm. even if you just Uh, you you just uh, doing business mm. it, it's crazy different mm. there's a school i called it's in like kipia mm. to just connect alumni and the, mm. the head teacher was like mimi si wataki hapa they're mm. all border border drivers uh, mm. you, you get like they, they need somebody who will mm. raise the aspiration of mm. the young people in the school so mm. that they're not thinking nikitoka hapa all, all you can do is be a house help for a boda boda a boda boda driver so mm. i feel like that that power of aspiration mm. that most young people especially yeah. in rural school or mm. in slums are lacking mm. that we as a nation it can provide mm. L- last time i was part of well, some campaign we are developing mm-hmm. called my future pledge mm-hmm. and we are targeting kenyans 35 and above mm. <laughs> to make a pledge to mm. commit to support a young person mm. or give them a leg up because mm. you think it, it, could, it could mean a lot mm. to just do that absolutely yeah so there is I feel a very challenged to do that. personally <laughs> i've just as you're speaking i've just run through the three or four schools i've been a part of and i i think i will have uh, i'll mobilize my children um and so in an effort to pass it along <laughs> as a, as a, as a something that they should do mm. i'll mobilize them to take them one to learn where where i was <laughs> and then maybe to just also yeah. hope hopefully they can do that with their own schools yeah the, in the future the, the person doing our communication she's travel the world and stuff mm. but the other day she was telling me pauline my former school has been condemned because of jiggers you know mm. you can see the pain in her That's eyes Rana. no it's in somewhere in loya land okay. it's been condemned because of mm. jiggers and you can see the pain like mm. okay i don't get to take my kids there but it's It's my village is just mm. next there and mm. I I feel like primary school yeah. alumni kuna kwanga your connection like yeah. it's your home area yeah. like what can I do mm. uh, and I would hope more Kenyans especially yeah. for primary school we can ask ourselves mm. what what can we do because mm. most of the time you go to the even as much as I went to Shadraki Malal it was a different time mm. it, it's not what it is right now the catchment is just kids from Kibera mm-hmm. but when I was there it was a catchment for everyone around that That's area Gumo and yeah. School South bus- East, South buses were functional mm. most kids were coming to, yeah. to the school with buses mm. so there's a whole there was mm. a whole cultural mm. integration that mm. i got that i know most kids that go to mm. that school right now mm. don't mm. yeah mm. Uh, and also you were asking Do you go back yeah i've gone back to shadraki malal mm-hmm. i'm not really connected to my high school mm. not no as you would wish well, as i would wish especially since this is the area i work mm, with mm. but i think for for me shadraki mala there's a lot of agency mm. this is a case of missed opportunity because mm. i know where my classmates are they're doing really well mm. and running big organizations mm. that they went to this mm. small school mm. that mm. would increase that relatability mm. and excitement so i was in kimathi as i mentioned mm-hmm. and um we in a whatsapp group that uh, i don't know i can't even remember who founded it and then i got to join <laughs> it like a couple of months or years after it it's on but i think we've lost two teachers that were very dear to us mm-hmm. but at some someone had posted in the group the picture of the school uh and some classes that needed like a really good proper facelift and we mobilized because some people are, are even not in the country people are everywhere but we were able I really acknowledge a gentleman called Eric Nganga who has ensured that we continue doing this and we continue paying back you know um, I don't even know if it's paying back paying forward so to no, speak yeah 
um, the, the, the block was, was, was uplifted. We were able to visit one of our teachers uh, whose health was deteriorating. Um, th there's, and I feel it's a really, even for at a human level, it's a really, really, really good thing to be able to do. And I'm, I'm really grateful that you are able to just speak to that for the individual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, as you mentioned, you said his name is Eric Nganga. Yeah. Uh, on a daily basis, those are the people I work with. Mm. Like, they are the ones trying to do mm. that. Like as an mm. organization, we're not really trying to build alumni network. Mm. We're just actually, it's already happening. Mm. So my work is to make sure Eric mm. Nanga is not getting tired mm. because mm. you know in a chance can't get he will. Tired. I, he can't get tired. It's silent and, yeah. Uh, last year I had an opportunity to present at the African, African Philanthropy Forum mm -hmm. in Kigali. Mm. And it was a conversation about alumni giving as African philanthropy. Mm. And I was thinking about the many hundreds of alumni leaders I work with. Mm. They raise a lot of money through mm. Those the, kinds of things, yeah. these kind of things. Mm. I don't think they consider them as, themselves as philanthropists. That's uh, true. Yeah, and, and I was thinking like, uh, I mean, I'm inspired by the women I work with. They're very busy women. They have their own careers. They're leading organizations. Mm. They take time to to to... I know you know the drama in our subgroup. They, they mm. make they get time mm. to organize people in our mm. subgroup mm. to either provide a scholarship, mm. yeah. buy a bus. They're yeah. doing a lot of things, mm. and I keep thinking like most of the That's time cool. when you talk to them, they're mm. not thinking about them uh, themselves as philanthropists. Philanthropist. The work they're doing is not mm. factored anywhere. Mm. So it's also being in a position to it's tell powerful. the stories more. Mm. Uh, provide this they need up the policy framework mm. around alumni giving mm. which is which is not mm. like even the money doesn't get counted mm. when you're thinking yeah. where did money from education come from it should mm. be government civil servant mm. uh, civil society mm. parents but mm. not necessarily alumni. alumni but you are able to estimate and see that we are able to estimate and see actually it is a lot you know it's what, just, what what figure you mentioned 40 something you know i'm saying like in two, 2019 mm -hmm. which was the last time we had proper data mm -hmm. We around just less than a hundred alumni network. They mm. had raised two point six million dollars. That's two hundred and seventy six that. million. Look at that. And the reason it's not it, when it's on an individual level, yeah. it looks like very little money because yeah. you contributed a thousand because yeah. it was us. A hundred, a thousand, two thousand. Yeah. yeah. Multiply that by the number of schools, the yeah. number of people in a group. People, the, yeah. There's a lot of money there, and the school that I know that is trying to has good data is OSS. All Starehan society. Mm. That's because they've been doing this for quite a oh, long time. But this is Starehan. Everyone, I mean, Starehan <laughs> and Bush. They, are they, the two. they yeah. turned 50 mm. as an association mm. a few years ago. Mm. And I think they have a target of raising two, two billion Kenyan mm. shillings for their endowment fund. Mm. Probably a quarter away there. Mm. So there is a huge opportunity. Mm. And Initially, my data, my because there's no data, mm. my thinking was it's actually the big schools that get to do this, mm. and the more you do, it's actually the not more true. It's, it's not true. It's mm. <laughs> a school in Quisero, mm. <laughs> or small schools that feel actually they need and they know how urgent mm. they need to do is. Mm. So I think it happens a lot mm. just because we don't think about it much, mm. and the data we collected last says. Alumni is elitist, so mm. that people just mm. don't associate because of mm. that. But mm. it, it does happen a lot more mm. than we tend to believe it does. Yeah. And alumni networks by themselves, not just for going <coughs> back to school, but also for connecting with one another. Yeah, I've seen, for another. instance, in our alumni uh, group for primary school, opportunities. Someone says, I'm making, um, I make cake. Mm. And give me business, or um, I provide this service. So even just staying connected together, the, the the giving back is giving forward because you're also able to feed onto each other and your present gigs True. in a really good way. Uh, mm. Celebrating milestones, you know, yeah. um, celebrating birthdays, or or you know, if you're doing things. So it's um, I think it's, there's a really powerful thing around alumni, and it's. I mean, there's a scientific angle around it with data and all, yeah. but also at a very human, at a very human level. level, it is very, very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. One of the most powerful stories, you know, most of the time when we're asking alumni to give, we have these predefined ways they mm. can that we, we think, one, we can measure, mm. and two, because that's how we can draw a direct interaction with education. Mm -hmm. So there's this group, uh, alumni group in Kembo. Mm -hmm. They called their former headmasters, Dom, what I call it, Dom Masters, mm. 
forum to share good and say sorry. Mm. So, you know, some oh. of the schools there, they were very rowdy as yeah. young men, mm. and now as old men and mm. dads, they know mm. they were not the best. Mm. So they just called to make amends. Mm. And for me, that was such a powerful mm. story of mm. the power of alumni. You could mm. even see the old men, they were actually old men mm. reaching out and saying, mm. we are mm. sorry. Mm. <laughs> and so in, I thought in any of our programming, we wouldn't have thought <laughs> That is one yeah, of the things we can do. That's an unexpected but very human nice outcome. Yeah. Mm. We also ran a campaign called the Santi Molimo, mm. and it was just an opportunity for people mm. to thank and mm. celebrate teachers mm. because I think, like, has been said so many times, they are unsung heroes. Yeah, they are. Truly. Yeah. Mm. So I felt that also this is a part mm. that was one of. Mm. Those things you don't when you're busy doing programs and mm. getting data, you mm. don't think, oh, some just want to say, connect and say thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. And your own life has continued to transform as you have continued working with alumni. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, where did we live outside my personal life? You are you are dating. <laughs> <laughs> Does that really end? Yeah. So I am a mom now. Mm. So uh, she's sixteen months. Oh wow, almost two. Yeah, almost two. Mm. She's conquer Susanna. What? what? <laughs> That's not a local name at all. No, it's mm. not. Mm. It's Corsa. Corsa. He has he has Corsa origins. <laughs> yes. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And you're looking forward to continuing building your legacy with him and Yeah, yeah, true. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Um, so when you look into into the future mm -hmm. and um, with the lens of where you've, you're coming from, what you've been able to see, what you've been able to do and achieve, what is it that you you, you look forward to, um, to, to as you imagine uh, Pauline in the future? Mm. I, I do believe in every way my... This work has, especially the last decade, has been say life defining, mm. and there are moments because it's not really easy. One mm. is actually my predisposition. Mm. Like I generally quiet, and this work involves a lot of parties and mm. it's community building. So mm. you have to be part of community mm. building and going to community. So I feel. Uh, sometimes ill-equipped to do it, mm. mostly just because of that. Mm. But I also know it's very important to mm. work and somebody mm. has to do it. Mm. So I'm kind of glad to be part of champion, championing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll give an example. A few years ago, around 2020, mm -hmm. I used to live around Raptor. Mm -hmm. And I'm crossing the road and there's an old man trying to cross the road. But he can't because cars keep... Uh, he had a... What's your name? He a walking stick. A walking stick. Mm. So I turn back and help him cross the road. Mm. And then as we're talking, he tells, he tells me he's a guard in one of the places that are actually the two, two gates in my apartment. Mm. And he's like, hey, my, my son has been admitted to, I'll mention the school because it's an interesting story, Musingu, mm. but he don't have money. Mm. So because he also tells me I'm very little. So I, I, I give him a card and say, give me a call. He actually does. And then I go through my records. I'm trying to see if we have alumni from Musingu and we don't have it as a network. But there's a guy in my phone saved as just alumni Musingu. That means from the interaction, I didn't even save their name. I would later realize we'd actually never met. So I call him and say, there's this boy that been admitted to his school, they can't go because they don't have school fees. He says, okay, let me talk to the boys in my group. I'll call you back. And in a few minutes, they call me back. It's like, yeah, boys say they pay the school fees. And they actually do get to do that, yeah? Pay, pay school fees for this young boy. Mm. And then see, now I'm calling the school, the primary school to find mm. more details. They find he's not even position one, he's position three. Mm. So there are two more that won't get an opportunity. The school mm. was in satellite. Mm. There are two more that won't get my opportunity. Mm. So my team tried to locate these two young boys mm. and where they'd been admitted. Mm. Same call, you just mm. call, make a call and mm. it happens. They mm. end up going to school. Mm. So, and I think the reason I bring that story is just a case of that missed opportunity. Mm. Mm. Last year, somebody, one of the girls from my, the place I grew up, mm. it's been demolished because it's being upgraded. Mm. But there's a school that survived. It's called Kibira Blessed Academy. Mm -hmm. They had a girl who performed really well. She'd mm. been admitted to Precious Blood mm. uh, Reruta. Mm -hmm. 
same case he can't go the mom works as a house help or a mm. hairdresser mm. so again I, you know the alumni like i have this girl mm. Mm. <laughs> can you just take the girl and mm. within two minutes it's mm. it's sorted like mm. The reason it's easy to sort, if you're in a group of 60, mm. it's like less than a thousand, you've taken mm. a girl to school. Mm. Mm. And I feel like it's just a case of so many opportunities mm. because there's no connection. Yeah. People don't know that alumni scholarships are an option. Mm. We haven't created yeah. an infrastructure where they are, mm. but there, we have a lot of people who mm. happily take a child to school mm. or combine forces to do that. Mm. So I feel like it's a case of many, many opportunities. Mm. So. Sometimes I stay because of those two cases. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, I can go and get another job, mm. right? But if I if I don't see this through or hand it over to someone who sees who through, it's a missed opportunity. It so mm. I think that has made me stay even mm. when I feel like I'm ill prepared for this job. Mm. But so that is one of the things. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what I would really want to do, mm. <laughs> I've only loved lit literature, reading mm. and writing. So mm. I feel like there's an opportunity for me to whether read or write, not necessarily write about my story, mm. but also just be part of uh, documenting stories mm. that would uh, those, those stories from that point because sometimes when you're reading stories of poverty mm. there's only something missing like mm. w whether it's one-sided story or you didn't get to the what do you call it to the heart to the heart of it mm. there's this okay ex-boyfriend mm. we're trying to do something like a writing exercise mm. <laughs> it did go somewhere we he didn't grow up in Kibirani. Mm. <laughs> when uh, you you move from the village and come mm. and we're trying to just ex change correspondence mm. on what it means to live in a life of poverty mm. and there's something you wrote about nowadays you can ask somebody call me cool I guess like mm. it doesn't it feels it doesn't feel like a, a real thing mm. because you sometimes you can conceptualize mm. that somebody sleeping hungry because mm. they didn't eat mm. and I think that's where poverty is most people at a dinner table or, uh, we won't talk about it because it feels like something we should have sorted out yeah People shouldn't be sleeping hungry or not going without school fees because as a society sometimes you feel something we should have resolved especially the issue of hunger mm. so i feel like as my as we talk and become very sophisticated there are aspects of poverty that get missed out mm. because whether we are talking about what did you call it your log frame you mm. it won't fix mm. so nicely mm. so i feel that there's this story that needs to be written mm. properly and I, I would love to be part of that mm. Mm. so yeah i would want to Absolutely. transition to do mm. and i think i write with ease mm. <laughs> as mm. opposed to many things i do like the mm. work i do right now i don't do with ease it's mm. a lot of struggle mm. uh, these the alumni the two alumni group having a bash tomorrow mm. The reason I haven't responded because it means going out and mm. Mm. <laughs> it's something it I struggle. It takes a lot from me, mm. but I think writing or documenting mm. or mm. taking the insights we have, like mm. if I would sit down, I'd want to write more, especially the topic of social capital, mm. alumni mm. relations. Mm. I feel I would, mm. Mm. I would thrive there. Mm. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. Nice to hear. And I think it's also a path that you can chart. Yes. Um, because it remains uncharted. I think the, as you say, the stories of people are the ones that inspire. True. And and if there is good writing, um, that, you know, um, sc sc scribbling stuff and writing it well, mm -hmm. lives uh, outlives the human beings, outlives the human uh, experience, and it yeah. continues into generations and generations. One of the people who inspired you the most that you are happy to meet was someone whose book you had read. Uh, and now you are sort of like, you know, in, you're seeing them. And I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing just to be able to pen down. And I th if you have the gift, <laughs> let's do this. Sure. Let's do this. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll give the last moments to you just to give your final reflections or, or, or um, mention anything around your journey that you would like to, but also um, reflect. Um, I, however, I want to thank you for choosing to come to um, to share your story, your path, your reflections, your insights, and also to call out, you know, some of the systemic issues that you're not doing in, within the education sector, but also call in all alumni to play their role. And for me, I live with 
a, a, a duty <laughs> that I commit to, you know, return to the different schools I've been to and, and, um, and be part of futuring for someone else. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for coming. Uh, but I would imagine you have some reflections that you would like to, uh, to, to conclude, even maybe as you think what you would tell your younger self <laughs> and, and just as you conclude your story. Oh. Yeah. You ended it so well with a call to action, so I feel like I'm ruining it. Uh -huh. But then you introduced something really good. So mm -hmm. in when I started working, the first school that actually I went to, to, when I was being trained, we actually went to schools in the UK to get them to to see how this was playing out. Mm -hmm. And they had this exercise of writing letter to 16 year old self. Mm -hmm. And I've always felt like that is a good opportunity. You know, for most young people, it always felt like you 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 left school and now you're here. Mm. Like that journey is missed. Mm. And I think it would be a very powerful thing to do with young people mm -hmm. to understand the people's journey. Mm. So like right now, the society looked a little bit shaky and people mm. are looking for answers, knowledge. So mm. I feel like if as a society, you can do that 16 year old self to mm. just reflect and mm. advise 16 year old self mm. to be a good way to communicate and bring young people to a conversation that I feel is missing as school struggle with a lot with a lot of discipline so i feel there's an opportunity for us as mm. a society to just mm. go there and especially if you we went to a public school mm. and uh, the reason i say that because there's so much need <laughs> and and missed opportunity to just give that back so mm. Mm. 16 year old self mm, since i've done this exercise i was very quiet and i think i missed out on a lot I watch my siblings, having grown up in Kibir, I think they got something I didn't get. <laughs> uh, some stamina and energy, like they are very, they, they connect well with people and stuff. And I feel uh, when I was in high school, this is the time I got an award for being the most disciplined girl in school. Uh, not Now I look at, at it, it wasn't a question of discipline, that was quiet. If you don't talk to people, you don't get in trouble. So I feel like I could have, uh, taking up more opportunity, be bolder and made friends because it's something I've learned in my adulthood and it's not something easy to learn in your adulthood. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that be as curious as possible. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities. Like the world is, it offers a lot if you mm -hmm. go seeking. Mm -hmm. So just encourage a 16 year old to just mm -hmm. keep seeking. Mm -hmm. The world mm -hmm. offers itself mm -hmm. to our imagination. Oh, powerful. Thank you so much. Keep seeking. The world <laughs> offers itself to our imagination. This has been Didi with Maxi. We'll be back with yet another episode um, shortly.